So in today's lesson, we're going to sort of expand one of the skills that we had done previously in that sort of implicit differentiation. And we're going to use that to sort of explore exercises where there might be a variety of rates of change, and we want to look at the relationship between those rates. So before we get started, let's take a deep breath. And let's begin. So when we studied implicit differentiation, we were always taking the derivative with respect to x. In this lesson, we're going to be taking the derivative pretty much always with respect instead to t. In other words, we're going to be looking at how these quantities are going to be changing over time. Before we get into sort of what this means, I actually want to take a moment to sort of practice this, uh, like just mechanically. So for the first example, with, with three separate parts, I want us to find the derivative of each of these following relationships with respect to t. Now remember what we learned about implicit differentiation. Anytime you take the derivative of a variable that isn't the variable of differentiation, so anytime you take the derivative of something that isn't t, you're going to need to use a chain rule and put d whatever dt. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this first one first together. If I wanted to take the derivative of this with respect to t, I might look at it and say, well, you know, a is just a variable. It, it's almost like it's just an x or it's just a y. Um, the derivative of this should be just 1, but this variable is not t. And so even if I say that the derivative of a is 1, it'll be 1 times chain rule times dA dt. Okay? Your other option there is to just sort of think about this idea that the derivative of a is dA dt. Like, literally, the notation dA dt means the rate of change of a with respect to t. It means the derivative of a with respect to t. Now, on the other side, I have sort of a, a little bit more complicated of an expression. It's 6s squared. I would use the power rule on this. The power rule would tell me that this is 12s, but then chain rule times the derivative of what was inside, so times ds dt. Okay, so this is sort of mechanically what the derivative of that relationship is with respect to t. I'll be talking more in this video about what this means. We're going to be getting to that soon, but I wanted us to take a moment to make sure that we understood mechanically how to do these things. Um, the second one should be fairly easy. It should be very similar to the previous one. The third one's a little bit more complicated, so I'd encourage you to work on taking the derivative of this with respect to t, and then check it, and then we'll look at the third one. So for this next one, the derivative of the left-hand side would be dv dt. Again, because this thing is not t, I have to do the chain rule. I have to do my dv dt. The right side, I'm 4 thirds and pi are constants. r is the variable, so I'm going to use the power rule. I'll bring the 3 down. That'll give me 4 pi r squared. But the thing inside of that cubed was an r, and so I have to multiply by the derivative of that thing. Because that thing is not t, I need to multiply by dr dt. Okay, so there it is. This is my relationship between the derivative dv dt and the derivative dr dt. Okay. Now in the last one, in the last one you may notice that indeed there's a v on this side, and on the right side there's both an r and an h. In other words, the right side has two variables. It has two things that are multiplied together that are not constants. So what rule am I going to have to use on the right-hand side to do this derivative? Hopefully you recognize that I'm going to need to do the, the product rule on that side. But because those variables aren't t, I'm also going to have to do a chain rule. So if you're feeling good about trying this one on your own, you know, pause the video for 30 seconds, write down what you think this derivative should be, and then check back in with me. So the left-hand side here should be dv dt. Okay. Now on the right-hand side, I've basically got one-third pi r squared times h. So if I do the derivative of the first part, I'd bring down the 2, so it would be two-thirds pi r dr dt, and then I would leave the second thing alone, h. Right? Now plus the other half of my product rule, for the other half, I'm going to leave the one-third pi r squared alone. And now I'm going to do the derivative of the h. Well, again, h is not t, so dh dt. So this is, I mean, like, it, it's a long expression, but, but we can write it out. Um, 2 pi over 3 r dr dt. Well, I guess there should be an h in there too, right? And then plus 
1 3rd pi r squared dh dt. So in this case, the relationship between these rates is more complicated, but this is something that we can do. Okay. The work that we're going to be doing today is going to be much more like these. As we get further into this, this lesson is going to take us a few days. As we get into some of the more complicated ones, we will get into things where there are, are several different rates. But for today, it's mostly going to be these sorts of things that we're working through. So through these examples, we know that we can like mechanically differentiate these equations with respect to t. But there should be this question for you of like, what do these variables and symbols mean? Like, what 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 do we do with these things? And so that's that's precisely what we're going to look at next. So so let's get into an understanding of what we're looking at here. So to help you get an understanding of of sort of what these things are and what they mean, I want to look at a sort of a specific case. Right? Let's for a moment consider a sphere. Okay? And for this sphere. We know, well, I mean, we should know, that the volume of a sphere V is related to the radius by this equation. The volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay. Now, in our last example, we just showed that when I take the derivative of that with respect to t, this is what I get. Okay. So what do all of these variables mean? Okay. Well, V is clearly the volume at some point, and R is clearly the radius at some point. Like, we, we sort of understood what this original equation was saying. But the second one, what about this dV dt and dr dt? Okay. Well, dV dt, dV dt, represents the rate of change of the volume with respect to the time. In other words, it's a measure of how fast the volume of the sphere is increasing or decreasing. In other words, imagine that you've got a ball in front of you, but it's not just a ball. It's a ball that's either expanding and getting bigger, or it's a ball that's sort of like condensing and shrinking and getting smaller. All the time being a sphere, but it's growing or shrinking. dv dt represents how fast is the volume changing. Okay. Similarly, dr dt is this idea of, it's literally the rate of change of the radius with respect to time. In other words, this one is how fast is the radius increasing or decreasing? So if you, again, imagine that sphere that's in front of you that's shrinking or growing, it had an initial radius, and there might be a measurement of how fast the radius is getting bigger or how fast the radius is shrinking. Okay? This lesson is called Related Rates because what we can do is we, we can literally see the rates dv dt and dr dt, and we can see that those rates are related by this equation. There is a relationship between the rates. If the volume is growing really fast, then the radius is probably growing quickly as, all, as, as well. And so this lesson is about what is that relationship? How can we find those things? And there's, there's actually a really simple example, and it has a really neat real-world connection that I expect that all of you have noticed at one time or another, and that's blowing air into a balloon. And so this next example that we're actually going to get into is, is I hope, really going to connect with you on, on a, a, a kind of very specific level. In fact, if you like have a balloon around your house that you can blow up, you could actually bring it in and, and sort of use it along with this lesson. We're not going to like measure anything, but you'll actually be able to sort of see the thing that I'm going to be showing you. So let's get into that next. All right, so it's not perfect because when you blow up a balloon, it's not a perfect sphere, but but it's close. Assuming that you don't have one of those like clown balloons, like that you like bend into animals and stuff. So we just need like a round balloon here, right? So I want us to consider like a hypothetical spherical balloon. And if you actually have one, like, yeah, you can get it out and, and, and blow the balloon up. Um, and suppose that this balloon is being blown up at a constant rate of 25 cubic centimeters per second. Okay? Now, part A says find a relationship for dr dt, find a relationship for the rate of change of the radius in terms of the radius and dv dt. Okay, so to do part A of this, what I need to do is I need to think to myself, hmm, do I know any equations that link v and r? And I do, right? I know this equation that v, the volume of a sphere, is supposed to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. And if you don't remember that, that's okay. I'm actually going to review a number of those on, on the next slide. So great, this is, this is my relationship. If I now take the derivative of this with respect to t, so if I take the derivative of this with respect to t, what I'm going to get is I'll get that left-hand side, dv dt. dv dt is, 
Now the derivative of the right hand side, power rule would tell me to bring the three down. Four pi r squared, chain rule, times the derivative of the r, which is dr dt. Okay, so this is kind of part A, but part A actually said find a relationship for dr dt. So I actually want to like solve for dr dt. If I wanted to solve this for dr dt, dr dt would be whatever dv dt is divided by 4 pi r squared. This is the answer to part A. Part A said find a relationship for dr dt in terms of r and dv dt. Sure enough, I have dv dt and I have r on this side. What part A is telling us is it's telling us that how fast the radius is growing is related to how fast the volume is changing and the radius. Okay. Now parts B, C, and E are going to be sort of mechanical, plug in the numbers and find out the answer kinds of things. And then E is going to be the way that we sort of like connect these things together. So let's, let's take a look at that really quickly. Um, so for part B, Part B asks us, okay, how quickly is the radius of the balloon increasing? So they said, how quickly is the radius increasing? This is sort of like code for dr dt. So that's dr dt. Okay, they want us to find dr dt when the radius is 1. All right, well, dr dt is supposed to be, well, dv dt. What's dv dt? DVDT how, is how fast the volume is changing. Well, I don't know if you noticed it, but that's literally what the problem gave us. It said the spherical balloon is being blown up at a constant rate of 25 cubic inches per second. Right? In other words, the volume is growing by 25 cubic, inch, cubic centimeters per second. Right? So in the numerator here, I'm going to put down 25. And in the denominator, I'll put 4 pi... Now, r, for problem number 1, this is just 1, okay? So when I take this and plug it into the calculator, let's, let's see what we get. So I punched all that in, and I got that this was 1.99 centimeters per second. In other words, when the balloon was really small, the radius was growing at like 2 centimeters per second, Okay, let's go on and see for part C and part D, how quickly is the radius of the balloon increasing when the radius is 3 and when the radius is 5. Pause the video for a moment and go ahead and work through these. It should be something that's pretty simple for you guys. All I'm doing here is plugging in the 25 to the top and the 3 to the bottom. When I do that, I found that this was 0.22 centimeters per second. And when we did part D, when I was plugging in 5... When I got dr dt, this is 25 over 4 pi times 5. I got that this one was 0 0.07. Oops, I just realized I put, should have put another significant figure there. So 0 0.796 centimeters per second. Now question E is, in what way do these values match your experience blowing up a balloon? Have you noticed that when you're blowing air into a balloon, in the beginning, when the radius is really small, the radius expands really fast. And as the balloon gets bigger, the balloon grows more slowly. And it kind of gets to the point that once the balloon is really big, you could blow another huge lung full of air into the thing, and it feels like the radius barely gets any bigger. It's at that point that you kind of stop blowing air into the balloon because you start worrying that it's going to like blow up in your face. Um, that's what I was looking for in part E. And we don't need to write anything down for that. I, I just wanted us to see, hey, wait a minute. Just because the volume is changing at this constant rate of this 25 cubic centimeters per second, that doesn't mean that the radius is constantly growing also. The rate at which the radius changes probably changes over time. That's kind of what this lesson is about and how we figure those things out. So I want to get into a review of some equations and then do some more straightforward examples of these. Now, again, this lesson that we're doing is, is probably going to take two, maybe even three days for us to sort of practice all the pieces of it. But the first type of related rates problems are going to be geometric in nature, um, and they're going to require some of these following formulas. For today, I'm really going to be working with spheres, cubes, and the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and for... 
the next lesson, I will probably get into cones and cylinders. There's some other things we can do as well, but I wanted to take a moment to sort of make sure that you are aware of all of these formulas. I'm not going to read all of them to you, but these are all things that are here. Um, there, there are some interesting things I could mention about the cylinder one, but since I'm not doing that in this lesson, I'm not going to worry about reviewing it with you right now. We'll talk about that when we get to it. So, you know, note these. If any of them are ones you recognize, you might like put a smiley face next to them like, hey, I know that one. The ones that you don't, like circle them. Make sure that you know, hey, this is something that we should, that we should learn and be aware of. I believe that all of these are in the IB formula book, um, so that's also a good thing to know about. Uh, but I wanted to have them listed here. Okay. So now let's get into some examples of how we can look at related rates through these equations. So the first geometric shape that we're going to work with is a cube. Okay. So for this first example, um, while people are stuck at home, many are considering getting a quarantine pet, uh, like maybe a cat or a dog or a fish. Um, so one family chooses to adopt a cute baby cube, um, and they feed it daily so the baby cube can grow big and strong. Uh, so on account of that, the volume of the cube increases at a consistent rate of 10 cubic inches per day. I feel like the balloon example was a really... Um, it was a really world, real world example kind of problem. So I wanted to do something really real world example here, like with a pet, like a little, a little baby cube. Okay. Um, so this cube, the, the volume seems to be increasing at a consistent rate of 10 cubic inches per day. So part A asks us, okay, great. How quickly is the edge of the cube increasing? So how quickly is the edge of the cube increasing? So they're basically asking us to find like ds dt like edge side something like that i don't use i often don't use e for the edge because it reminds us of euler's number and i don't want to get confused so i'm going to use s for like side length so ds dt is what i want to find and i know that the volume is eight cubic inches okay so hmm i have up here dv dt and i want to find s so do I have a relationship between the volume of a cube and the side length? Well, sure I do. The volume of a cube is supposed to be s cubed. So when I take the derivative of that, my derivative is dv dt. That's the derivative of volume, the rate of change of volume. How fast the volume grows is equal to 3s squared times ds dt. Okay, so I know that my dv dt is 10, yay, 3 uh oh, I don't know what s is, and ds dt is what I'm trying to find. So I'm in a spot here where it's like, oh man, shoot, I don't, I don't know what the what the side length is. Well, a bit of good news here. They told us that the volume was eight cubic inches. So if the if the volume at this moment is eight cubic inches, couldn't I say that eight cubic inches has to be whatever the side length is cubed? So if I cube root of both sides, I could find that the side length at that moment would have to be two. Like, the volume being 8 and the side being 2 are, are like the same piece of information. They're just looked at it in different dimensions, right? So I can take this 2 and put it in right here. I'm going to have 10 equals, uh, what, 12 ds dt. And so I could divide the 12 over and wind up with 5 sixths being ds dt. And so that's my answer. If I really wanted to put units to that, it looks like they would be 5 sixths of an inch per day. They just, they grow up so fast, don't they? All right, now, part B asks, all right, how quickly is the surface area of the cube increasing at this time? And that's really important because you want to know, like, if you get a, like a little blanket for your cube, you want to make sure that the, the blanket would be able to cover the surface area of the real world, real world application, right? So, all right, for surface area, do I have a formula? Do I have a formula? that relates A, the area, to S, the side length of the cube, right? Well, I should. The side of a cube, like the area of one side is S squared, and there's six faces on a cube, so the area is 6S squared. So when I take the derivative, I'm going to get dA dt is 12S dS dt, okay? And then they wanted me to find how fast the surface area is changing at this same time, which means any answer that I found earlier on would still work. ds dt is still a representation of how fast the side is growing. The side length is still 2, so I can just plug these things in. 12 times 2 times the ds dt, which was 5 sixths, 
6 will cancel that down to 2. This looks like it's going to be 20. And this would be 20 square inches per day. Okay? So I, I hope that these are making sense. In, in a lot of ways, we're still just plugging values into these things. But I'm hoping that these computations and, and all of this sort of has meaning for you as we're working through these examples. All right, so this next example um, is another real-world-ish one. It might not be quite as applicable as that adorable pet one that we just talked about, but there's, there's still some value in this one, right? So consider an intersection of two roads that meet at a right angle, okay? So imagine that you've sort of got two roads that meet at a right angle, okay? So there's a first car that's 30 kilometers west of the intersection. So here's my first car, A and it's 30 kilometers over this way. And it's traveling east, it's traveling this way at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. So 60 kilometers per hour, okay? And then there's a second car that's 40 kilometers south, so this guy's down here 40 kilometers, okay? And it doesn't say which way or how fast they're going. But then the problem says, if the distance between the two cars, so the distance, so literally the distance between them, if the distance between them is decreasing at a rate of 10 kilometers per hour, hmm, the dis okay, so if I called this edge like C, I guess that would mean, not even I guess, it would mean this is telling me something about DC, DT, the rate of change of that length. It says the distance between the two cars is decreasing at a rate of 10 kilometers per hour. So what would we say about dc dt? Right? We would say that dc dt is negative 10. And I mean, I could put the kilometers per hour. I don't know that I want to deal too much with the units now just because I want to make sure that we're, we're clear on this. So if c is the length between them and that length is getting shorter because that length is decreasing, we would say that dc dt is negative 10 kilometers per hour. This is kind of the setup for the problem, right? Now that I can see this, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to sort of draw this a little bit bigger so that we can maybe talk about these pieces. So I just found it up here that A is 30. And so what does that mean that DA DT is? Well, DA DT, if the car is going this way, what's happening to this length? Is this length getting longer or shorter? The length is getting shorter, so my dA dt is going to be negative 60. Okay? Over on this side, I have that b is 40, and I don't know what's happening with db. I don't know if b is shrinking or getting larger. I don't know if it's... I, I'm not really sure what's happening. We're going to have to figure that out. For this side, c, I don't, I'm not told how long c is, but I am told that dc dt is... I'm sorry. I am told that c is shrinking, which means dc dt is negative. Okay. The problem says, how fast and in what direction is the second car moving? So they want me to find this thing. Okay, that's what I want to find. So to find that, I'm probably going to need to know what this C is. And I built this problem specifically. This is a right triangle. One of these sides is 30, one of them is 40. Hopefully you guys remember three, four, five special right triangles. So because that's 30 and that's 40, this one has to be 50. So now, how do I relate all of these rates? Well, I need an equation that's going to connect them, right? I know from the Pythagorean theorem that a squared plus b squared has to equal c squared. And from there, I could take the derivative with respect to t. If I took the derivative with respect to t, my a squared would be 2a dA dt. My b squared would be 2b dB dt. And my c squared would be 2c dc dt. And at this point, well, actually, at this point, I notice, haha, they all have a 2. I could just divide a 2 out of this. But at this point, I realize, hey, wait a minute. I literally know all of these values except for the one that they want me to solve for. So let's just plug them in. a is 30. da dt was negative 60. b was 40. db dt is the thing I want to solve for. C is 50, DC, DT is negative 10, and now this is just a matter of solving this, right? This is going to give me negative 1800 plus 40 DB, DT equals negative 500. If I add this 1800 over, I'll get 40 DB, DT is positive 1300. 
Dividing by 40, I'll get dBdt is 130 over 4, which is 65 over 2, which is 32.5 kilometers per hour. And the question asks two things. They ask how fast and in what direction. Okay, this was 32.5 kilometers per hour. It's positive 32.5 kilometers per hour. And, and what's really important here is the direction. When I found that this was positive, it doesn't mean the car is going up. It doesn't mean the car is going north. It means that B is getting larger. If this was 40 and B is getting larger, then the car is going that way. The, the car going that way is the only way that B gets longer. Right? So that means that our car is going 32.5 kilometers per hour south. That's the answer to the question. So there's a lot of mechanics in here. There's a lot of understanding and there's a lot of interpreting. So I hope that these are making sense. And if not, I hope that you guys are sort of writing questions in the margins so that I can respond to them or that you're you know, going to pop into class and ask about them. I have one more example that I want to go through. So let's, let's get into that one now and see if we can get through it quickly. All right, so imagine now that a 13 foot long ladder is leaning against the side of a building. So we sort of imagine we've got this building, we've got the ground, 13 foot lat long ladder is leaning against the side of a building. So this is 13, okay. The base of the ladder begins to, oh no, slide away from the house at a rate of two inches per second. How quickly is the top of the ladder falling when the base of the ladder is five feet from the side of the house? So it's kind of like what's happening here is this time they're giving me the C. The B is over here. B is like five feet because that's like at that moment, the base of the ladder is five feet from the house. And they gave me information about dB dt, right? What would dB dt be? Right? They said that it was sliding away at two inches per second. So my units are a little bit, a little bit messy here. They're working with inches. What is two inches in terms of feet? Wouldn't this be one-sixth of a foot per second? This is the one place where units might matter. And I don't, I don't know that I'm going to throw very many of these at you, but I wanted us to be exposed to it. Should this be positive or negative, and why? Right? I don't want to say that it should be positive because it's moving to the right. It is positive. The reason that it's positive, though, is because as the ladder slides, B gets longer. Okay? Now, there is some question here over on the side of what is A and what is DADT, right? And so A is like how tall that is, and DADT is how fast the thing is, is moving, right? The question asks, how quickly is the top of the ladder falling? That is DADT. That's what's being asked for in this problem, okay? Now, just like we found in the last problem, it's helpful to know all of these things. So I would like to figure out what A is, and I should probably find out what DCDT is as well. Okay, so A first, if I have a triangle that's 5 here, 13 here, and unknown over here, um, that's actually another Pythagorean triple. It's a little bit less known, but 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Right, so at this point... The height up the building is 12, so we can use 12 there. What about dc dt? What does dc dt represent? Think about that for a moment. dc dt represents how fast is c changing? But wait, what was c? c is like literally how long the ladder is. Does the problem say anything about it being like a magic ladder or like an extension ladder or a ladder that's shrinking? No, like it's just a plain old ladder. So what is dc dt? How much is the length of the ladder changing? It's not. DCDT is zero, right? So now that I have all of this information, I want to go to an equation, take a derivative, and then look at the relationship between these rates, right? So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We've now done a problem that's kind of similar to this one. I'd encourage you to pause the video and try doing all the steps for this and make sure that you can get it on your own. So when I take this derivative, I'm going to get 2a dA dt plus 2b dB dt equals 2c dc dt. And then from here, it's just a matter of plugging these values in. Just like last time, all of these twos are going to drop out, by the way. All right, so when I plug all of these things that I have in, my a value was 12. My dA dt was the thing that I wanted to solve for. 
B was 5, DB, DT was 1 sixth, C was 13, but I don't really care because DC, DT is actually 0. And so at this point, all I need to do is link all of these things together and solve, right? This is going to give me 12 DA, DT. This is going to be 0. I can just move the negative 5 sixths over here. So DA, DT is negative 5 over 72. It's that many feet per second, right? And we can tell, and this is an interesting thing here, because this is negative, we can tell that the ladder is sliding down the wall. And that's not shocking, right? When the bottom of the ladder moves out, the top of the ladder kind of has to slide down too. So I hope all that made sense. As always, if you have questions, make sure that you ask them so I can help you out with it. Um, and we are going to spend a few more days on these problems, but they are going to get more complicated. So I hope that we're able to make sense of these basic ones sort of before we go any further. So best of luck as you work through this assignment.